Grace and peace, grace and peace. You saw that thumbnail. You saw the title. You know what we're about to do. So let's get to it. To just end the week with a good old uh, conversation, if you will. This is going to be a spicy one, though. I'm going to let you know ahead of time. And this is geared primarily toward those who have high melanin. However, our lesser melanated brothers and sisters and cousins are welcome to participate in the conversation as well. So don't feel like you cannot uh, contribute to this because of your melanin content. But before, we but today I want to talk about a topic, and we hear it all the time. If you're the highly melanated, you've heard it. You might have even contributed to it. You may have talked about it one time before in the, in the past, and what it is is that black people are the only ethnic group that I know of that if you don't hold to a belief and ideology that the majority of this ethnic group subscribes to, we threaten to kick you out, remove your black card, not invite you to the picnic and so on or to cook out, whatever. And it, I don't think there's other people groups that do that. I don't believe that the Asian community does that. I don't think they do that. I don't think that the Indian community, hey, you don't like Bollywood, you're out of here. Or I don't think the Italian people do that. Oh, your sauce out of a can, get out of here. I don't think they do that. But black folk do that. We, we do it like common. Like it's just like for, first nature, for lack of a better term. Oh, you don't believe this? You're no longer black. Oh, you don't do this? Give me your black card. Oh, you do this? I don't think any other people group does that. And it's so interesting to me. And today we're going to look at the infamous Joe Biden saying that if you don't know that you're going to vote for me, then you ain't black. That foolishness that he said. But we're going to listen to Michael Eric Dyson, whom I do not respect as a thought leader. I don't think that he's intelligent, nearly as intelligent as he wants to believe he is. Try to justify this and try to make sense of what Joe Biden said on The Breakfast Club. Y'all know how I feel about The Breakfast Club. So this is like a hyper-convergence of all the things that just are ridiculous to me. Michael Eric Dyson, Joe Biden, Charlemagne the False God, fill them all in, jump, put them all together and shake it up, and you have this foolishness that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at Michael Eric Dyson regale us with his wisdom and insight. And I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek because it's not. Now, I will also say... Because The Breakfast Club, shout out to The Breakfast Club and iHeartRadio. Ladies and gentlemen, no further ado, let's go. Don't vote against your own best interest. I happen to believe that there is not even a question for black people of who to choose. I mean, Joe Biden has been far above uh, anything that president or ex-president uh, Trump has provided. I saw him in the, uh, what was it, the Chick-fil-A Chick -A talking about jobs, bro. I mean, the real quick, I believe that Trump panders just as much as anybody else. So I don't think that Trump going to the Chick-fil-A here in um, Hapeville, which by the way, is down the street from where Fonnie Willis's condo was. I'm not, I'm just pointing it out, but Trump going to Chick-fil-A. Sure. That's a political move. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Just like, I believe that Biden coming to Morehouse next Sunday, the Sunday after next is a political move. I don't, let's just be honest. Let's stop pretending like they are not political moves. The thing is, however, you don't have to, I don't have to, Eric Dyson do not have to agree politically and we can still be the highly melanated. So we're going to let him tease it out. But I just think that's super interesting. The unemployment rate of black America now is about 5.6. When Biden came into office, it was 9.3. Uh, he's talking about money. and Y'all want to know why the unemployment rate was 9.3? Let me ask you a question. When Biden came in office, was there anything going on in the world that maybe possibly was exacerbating the unemployment rate? Is it possible? I don't know. You know, is it possible that there was like a pandemic that was going on? Like, come on, Eric Dyson. You're going to use that as an excuse. Come on, my guy. Come on. And checks and i see sexy red and other rappers talking about he gave us a check first of all please study your politics and your civics that's the congress that allotted that money plus it's yo do and if you're going to count that way then count what biden did for relieving the the burden of people paying back their student loans and why is paying back student loans people that made the decision to go to college made a decision to make a cho chose a degree program or degree pathway that would lead to a particular job and did not find that at the end of the rainbow, why is paying their student loans off akin to 
stimulus checks, which, by the way, I disagreed with all of those. I disagree with uh, loan forgiveness. I disagree with stimulus checks. Like they both of them can be wrong, Eric. I'm just letting you know that. So because somebody is happy about free money, which, again, I disagree with. That doesn't make you noble by saying that, oh, well, they're wrong for that, no, Eric Dyson. That's not the case. Let's keep, and let's on go. and on and on. When we look at every metric, not only putting a black woman in the vice president's office, not only putting a black woman on the Supreme Court, but doing programs that lift all boats, that address African-American people specifically in some instances, but more broadly, issues that are concerning us, whether it's about discrimination in housing, uh, whether it's about uh, not only student loans, but every, every effort of education, kicking kids out of school early and on and on and on. It ain't no... Whenever you hear somebody talk like this, uh, kicking students out of school, like ask them to explain that. Now, I don't I don't expect Charlemagne the False God and DJ I Should Be in Jail Envy to pick this up. But just ask them, what are you talking about? Where in the world are, are we seeing kids kicked out of college early for what for what? What, what reason? And ask them to explain that. Don't let that slide. Now, they let that slide, and, you know, it is what it is. I don't expect them to be real journalists. But in that regard, ask them more questions than that. Don't, don't let that slide by. Let us go. A question for me. Donald Trump is a vortex of bigotry. He is the leader of the bigotocracy, the rule, reign, and tyranny of... The big retocracy. Now, I got to give him credit, though. I think Eric Dyson is a whole bona fide stir fried fool. But I got to give him credit for it. That was actually pretty funny. I got to give him that little bit of hat tip, whatever like that. But he's going to literally blame Trump for everything that goes wrong on the planet. <laughs> I promise you. You're going to be like, yo, like where, where does the responsibility of anybody start? Because Trump is taking over all responsibility. I'm going to run this back just a few seconds just so you can hear it. Let's go. Autocracy, the oh, rule, wait, reign, and tyranny. Donald Trump is a vortex of bigotry. He is the leader of the big autocracy, the rule, reign, and tyranny of forces that are antithetical to our best interests, not only as black people, but as a nation. And when we look at every indicate, indica what are the forces that are antithetical to every aspect of, of this country? What, what are they, Eric? What are they? See, when you go to the Breakfast Club, you know that Breakfast Club is where ideas go to die they they go to not be challenged they go to just be able to be spread without any kind of pushback what are you talking about now i admit charlemagne the false god has pushed back in some degrees and he's going to try to give it in a moment but it is it's a little bit too late it's too little too late let's just say like that but what are you talking about eric uh, somebody needs to call Eric Dyson's, hey, my, my, my guy, you might need to actually spend less time making up words like biggertocracy, which, by the way, is still kind of funny. And maybe come up, just sp spend a few more moments explaining what it is that you're talking about. Let us go. Education of where we are as a nation. This is a guy who's still standing by people who supported January 6th, the insurrectionists. He's trying to make them American patriots, but demonizing Black Lives Matter, demonizing people who protest for the right and the ability to live in this nation without the unjust encumbrances imposed on us by white supremacy. So I don't. So let me make sure I got this right. The unsolicited tourism of the Capitol building on that day in January, the sixth day, is akin to the summer of love that we see, that we saw going on, that burned parts of Atlanta, that burned parts of Chicago and other major metro cities. We see those, and those, those are the same. They're, they're the same akin. So we can make an apples to apples comparison. The, the unsupervised tour and the summer of love. We can put those together and see them as the same, Eric Dyson. Really? Come on, man. And the very worst part about this is Eric Dyson professes to be a preacher and he's actually in New York at the Breakfast Club because he's going to a conference to talk about social justice in the black church. Like, go figure that you would talk about something as baseless and as ignorant and as vacuous as that rather than give Charlemagne the false god and DJ needs to be envied in jail the gospel. Never mind going to give these black preachers the gospel. Never mind making much of Christ. Sure, we're going to go and make much of social 
justice. Let us continue. To understand what story. black people see in Donald Trump's swag. I mean, come on, it's borrowed swag at best. It's so Donald. Oh, here comes here he comes uh, filling in, uh, covering for. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Covering for Joe Biden and the you ain't black if you don't support me. Black people see in Donald Trump's swag. I mean, come on, it's borrowed swag at best. It's referred swag at best. I mean, Barack Obama had swag coming down Air Force Run. It might as well have been, you know, 50 Cent playing in the background. I don't know what you heard about me, but the right can't get a dollar out of me, right? He had swag, but he had a tan suit and people went crazy. Now Donald Trump, the face of neo-fascism, the face of an authoritarian government that has already indicated if he gets back in office what he's going to do, there ain't no choice for us. And black people, we got to wake up. These are the things we have to attend to. And look, you saw the article, I think, in the New York Times yesterday that said recently that said that Donald Trump and the Republican Party are supporting third party interests because those detract from and take votes away from Joe Biden. So so let me make sure I have that right, because the Democrat Party has never supported a third party to push against a Republican. They've never done that before. They've never supported, hey, if you don't vote for us, at least vote for the third party candidate. Never happened, right? Never happened ever. I got you. Great, great, okay. So we know in a tight race, every vote counts. To RFK Jr. in particular. RFK Jr. in particular. And I think that, again, we, this is not time for this extended uh, journey of narcissism, this escapade of self-deification. Bro, these are serious issues at stake, and black folk got to get out there and vote. I think, um, I, I don't just Okay, I'm going to let Charlemagne the False God in a moment is going to speak. And I have to say, man, as much as I don't like him, because I don't think that he's intelligent, he did ask some good questions. and had some reasonable pushback, but he's not giving Eric real smoke. He's not giving Eric Dyson real competition, dare I say, a real pushback. He's just giving him a little bit of like a little friendly little shoulder check. Let us continue this. However, the idea and the notion, and I, I really want people to start asking more questions. One of the reasons why I started Dear World Christian is I wanted people to realize that it is okay. It is perfectly fine to ask questions. You don't you're not going to lose your black card if you ask questions. You're still going to get invited to the cookout if you ask questions. Big Mama is still going to get you that nice little Christmas bag that she puts under the Christmas tree every year. God bless Big Mama if you ask questions. It's okay. Ask more questions. Eric Dyson says stuff in this video that you're like, what, what am I supposed to believe here? What is going on? Ask questions. Don't, don't feel like you can't ask questions questions you can you are a sovereign individual you're able to make ask questions ask him questions ask eric dyson ask other people that support these type of ideas what are you talking about what are you talking about that they said they're going to do what what specifically did trump say he was going to do when he becomes president again what did he say book chapter verse in context what did he say it where did he say it show me the links send me the links better yet don't even tell me just send it to me let us continue. I disagree with anything that you said, but I, I think that we don't take the time sometimes to take a step back and see why people do gravitate towards, you know, somebody like Trump. Because I, I keep telling folks over and over, you know, people will forget what you did. They'll forget what you said, but they won't forget how you made them feel. That's In 2020, mm -hmm. people... They, they got the stimulus checks, they got the PPP loans, so they felt like it was more money in their pocket. Now, what I tell folks is let's think about how we got there. We got there because of Donald Trump's mishandling of COVID. So do you right. want to see millions of people die Thank in you. order for you to get that check in your pocket? What was the mishandling? What was the mishandling? I'm not trying to be funny. I, I am not a, a uh, well, I, I I do believe that it was a pan, a pandemic. I do believe a lot of it was false, phony, and fake. But really, what was the mishandling? And again, he just said that, and Eric Dyson didn't ask any more questions. Eric Dyson didn't push back. Eric Dyson didn't say, hey, bro, what do you, what do you mean there? What, what does that mean? They just say it, and everybody key, key, keys it, amen in it, and they keep on rolling. That's how you end up getting caught in this dumb trap. But notice what he's saying right here, that black people should not support Trump. Now, I want you to understand that because we're going to read an article in a moment about, I, I think there are more people of my melanin content and greater who are starting to realize that this guy, this ideology is false. And they're starting to see it. And not only are they starting to see it, but they're starting to, to voice it. And they're starting to stand on, stand on it and say, yeah, I'm not a supporter of this. I'm not. I told y'all earlier, I saw, I heard many of my Morehouse brothers who are not excited about Joe Biden. Now, granted, they're not turning over, you know, 
going from blue to red or anything of that nature. They're not going all cattywampus on us. However, they're starting to question it. I don't know people who at one time voted for Trump who are now, after confliction and having a dark season of the soul, are now voting for Biden. But I could tell you a whole bunch of them who started, who voted for Biden, you know, the, the 900 quadrillion people that voted for Biden and the such, they, they voted with the stars and the, the amoebas in the ocean. Again, it, it was the, the most popular president on the planet. But I know a lot of them who are not, they're, they're not excited. They're not excited about Biden. I know a lot of them. And I know some who've actually said, no, I'm done with that dude. I'm voting for Trump. They, they said they don't care. They're voting for Trump. So my point in saying all of this is you don't see that type of excitement for Biden. And find it. Show me somebody who's excited about voting for Biden, not voting against Trump. There's something different there. Somebody who's excited. because Everybody I know is excited to vote for Trump. They don't really, they they could run, it doesn't matter. They want to vote for Trump. They want to vote for Trump. Good, bad, or indifferent. They want to vote for Trump. They don't care voting against Biden. Find me a Biden supporter that's excited to vote for Biden. That's what I'm looking for. But let's let this go. Let's finish, Jason. Right. And I think the other problem is the Democrats just do a terrible job messaging. And I think sometimes we help them with terrible messaging because we spend so much time talking about how bad Donald Trump is. Right. Knowing you ain't going to change none of those people mind who supporting Trump. Right. But you don't talk about the good that the Biden Harris administration is doing enough. I think what I, is, amen. I think. Amen. I mean, absolutely right. What is the good? No, no. Since you have the opportunity here, why don't you just regale us? I mean, again, the Breakfast Club is the most popular urban talk radio podcast, whatever you want to call it. They rule the roost. So you would get countless thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people that are listening to this, you would be able to tell them why they should be excited about Biden. All you gotta do is just do it. That's it. And they could do a better job of evangelizing their own evolution, their own view, viewpoints and what they've done for black people and others. But you, you know, you're damned if you do it and you're damned if you don't look on your show. Joe Biden made a joke. He was like, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Oh my God. I don't know if that was a joke. Well, here's my point. Mm -hmm. We say we want a white person who understands us and can vibe with us, right? Bill Clinton playing the saxophone, but more importantly, understanding the limits, the interests, the ideals of black America. That was an inside joke. Joe Biden saying, if you don't vote for me, that, that's a bit of swag, if you will, by saying, by promoting the fact that he understood the inside language and discourse of black mm -hmm. America. That was not laying, laying claim to the fact that, oh, of course, if you are authentically black, then I am the only choice for you. That was a bit of swag. And then we tripping. If you vote for Trump, you're voting against, you 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 vote against your own interest. I mean, he ain't lying. I don't detect no lies. So I'm saying. There is absolutely positively no way in the world Joe Biden was alert enough to realize that that was a some kind of uh, inside joke. No, somebody a speechwriter wrote it. He re retold it and it landed flat like a, a lead balloon. No, absolutely not. Because I guarantee you. If Trump said that Eric Michael Eric Dyson would have a totally different push if literally if I were interviewing Trump and Trump said, hey, uh, dear woke Christian, if you got to what is it? If you're conflicted about whether you're going to vote for me or for Biden, if you don't if you don't know who you're going to vote for, you ain't black. If Trump said that Michael Eric Dyson would blow a complete gasket. He would completely have an aneurysm laying on the floor, twitching and Charlemagne the false God and DJ Envy should be in jail would all be losing their minds. So it's no, no. You allowed that man to play you. You might as well let him call you the N word. He might as well say, hey, man, pass me that J, my knee. I mean, you could have just did that. I mean, it's really that basic. Joe Biden insulted you and you're not smart enough to say you were wrong. And Michael Eric Dyson right here is going to try to prove that or try to rather make a case that he did not. Matter of fact, I'm going to give Michael Eric Dyson a clown because, you know, um, uh, Charlemagne, the false God likes to do that. Uh, Was it the donkey of the day? So I'm going to put a clown. I'm, I see Tawan already got me. She already beat me to it. And we'll drop a clown emoji in the chat for Michael Eric Dyson. Just give him a clown because he is a clown. I'm sorry. There's no other way around it. Dear woke see at gmail.com. If you have a question, comment, or concern, or you don't like what I said, please understand. Ain't nobody got time for that. I don't care. All right. Let us go. Let us go. Fill it up with some gun. Fill it up. Absolutely. 
Let us know, man. Eric Dyson, man, you are a clown. Charlemagne the False God, you clown. This is a carnival because you got DJ should be in jail, envy in there with you. Y'all are clowns. Absolutely. <laughs> and please, if you have question, comment, concern, please make sure you email management. Absolutely. Let's roll. Let's go. Did I hit the button? I did not. And if he's got that, we don't mind it if, you know, um, you know, some rapper who's white doing it, you know, if it's Eminem and, you know, Dr. Drake and Sandham said he's the coldest brother on the microphone and what he does and blah, blah, blah. So we don't mind that kind of swag. But if a guy who understands us, who's had, look, look, complicated histories, you know, people are constantly pointing out, well, look at Joe Biden in the 1990s, bro. What have you done for me lately? People evolve and grow. They change. What has he done? Now, Joe okay. Let's go with Janet Jackson. Let's go with what have you done for me lately? What has he done? What has he done? Eric, I do not allow... This is why I like debates. This is why I, I believe that we should allow and encourage discord between discord between different ideologies because he's on the same platform and they're just talking. Nobody's challenging. Nobody's pushing back. Nobody's asking any more questions. What has Joe Biden done? What are you excited about? Please let us know. Let's go. Biden is still saying the stuff he said back then about, uh, uh, you know, not wanting his kids to be involved in a racial jungle or, you know, against busing. Find me a white person that really wasn't against busing at that particular point, even in enlightened white liberals. Now, my point is not. OK, fine. But find me a black person that doesn't that was um, find me a black person that was pro busing. Because I argue that busing was bad. I argue that integration was not as wonderful sunshine and rainbows as you would like to cause us to believe and to think it wasn't. It really wasn't. But I digress. Let us continue. Let's roll. To say that he is perfect, he's not. The point is, though, what has he become? What has he evolved to? Rakim said, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. What is he doing now? What is his interest uh, um, in our progress? And what do we get from supporting that particular figure? Donald Trump, again, your point is right. You've been supporting Democrats for 50 years. Ask the city of Detroit, what has it done for you? Ask Chicago, what has it done for you? New York? How about Memphis? How about uh, St. Louis? How about other black uh, controlled cities that are vastly Democrat? New Orleans? How about that? How has it worked out for them? Please ask more questions. Do not allow them to just get away with this question free type of content. Let's figure out why people are, are attracted to him. It ain't it ain't great. I mean, we, we could be attracted to him because rappers who put Donald Trump on no. understood that Donald Trump was like them. Swag. I don't care about rappers. I, I, I am not making political decisions because somebody who gets on a microphone can make a rhyme with way. I'm, that is not why I support Donald Trump. I support Donald Trump because guess what? Gas prices was not at doggone valedictorian levels when Trump was in office. How about we fix that? How about the fact that you could not buy that? You almost can't buy <laughs> three gallons of gas with $10 now. That's crazy. That is bananas. And so, yo, no, no, I'm not I'm not worried about a rapper. See, you are assuming and Eric, by the way, Eric Dyson is too old to be quoting rappers like he's quoting scripture. You too doggone old for that, Eric. My name is Dearwoke C at gmail.com. I'm right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Questions, comments, concerns. You too old for that, my guy. Go on and talk like a like an adult, like an elder, like an elder statesman, please. But again, back to the point that I'm making, sir, I'm not following, I'm not saying Trump is great because uh uh an a rapper said that I'm looking at the money that I'm spending on the basics and, he, and the, the, the bare minimum. And I realize that, hey, my family, by God's grace, is not really struggling. I joke about buying eggs, but I went and bought some eggs today. I joke about um, buying gas, but I fill my wife's car up every couple of days and I fill mine up today as well. We're not struggling. But guess what? There are countless other people. The working poor who are struggling, Eric Dyson, and you're sitting here blowing smoke up their tailpipe, telling them that um, um, the only reason people are supporting Trump is because some dog on rapper. Sir, you are a whole stir fried GMO fool, sir, a whole fool. I mean, they got Whole Foods, the grocery store, and we got whole fool Eric Dyson.
bag, a, a lot of bravado, but we see he ain't got the, he, he lying like most rappers, you know, about what they got. When Jay-Z said, well, yeah, hey, homeboy, where, playboy, where's your, those, those diamonds? That's not what you said. Where's the Hummer? That's not what you said you had. So we know a lot of rappers lie. That's what they do. So Donald Trump was attractive because he was a liar. He was, he was full of mendacity. Here's a guy, we're talking about Joe Biden. Back in the day, you and your daddy are racist in terms of the, what, uh, buildings you own and not wanting black people to be there. So if we're going to do it, let's go tit for tat. But my point is that, yes, at this point, don't we understand enough of why black people might be attracted to him some black men let's go there some black men because of the swag of patriarchy a man in charge he's talking about grabbing stuff this is vicious uh repudiation of a, an enlightened sense of masculinity you ain't got to do that in order to be a man so everything that donald trump represents that is attractive to us ain't great so tell me i'm gonna be honest with you there is not one moment i don't know one person that supports Donald Trump that I know that says, oh, I want to support Donald Trump because I want to go grab somebody. I, 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 that has got to be the most brain dead comment. And again, because Eric Dyson doesn't have an argument to the other effect. He doesn't have an answer to why I, as a black man, am not going to vote for Joe Biden, period, end of story. He doesn't have an answer, so he has to make up these straw man ad hom attacks and say the only reason I'm supporting him is because of rappers or because I want to do. Uh, dude, are you insane? Are you insane? Because if that be the case, then you you're kind of forgetting that Joe Biden his his um he gave the eulogy for Robert Byrd. He never repudiated Robert Byrd, a grand wizard cyclops juggernaut of the KKK you you don't hear him say anything about that right now we don't hear him mention it anymore so what are we to surmise from that what he has a he hasn't repudiated it so what do we do Eric Dyson see this is the ignorance but we could do this thing tit for tat all day long I might as well say hey the only reason black people support Joe Biden is because his son Hunter smokes weed there you go there you go that, that's it and all black men smoke weed and Hunter Biden is black because he smokes weed there you go. He got baby mamas. All black men got baby mamas. There you go. That's how we do it. Eric Dyson, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, my guy. Let's let's get a do away with the kind of patriarchy, the misogyny, the sexism that royal so so much of our community uh, in ways that are destructive, whether we see it in church or the temple, or the synagogue and so on, or whether we see it in schools. So the point is, yes, let's examine why black people may be attracted or others. And we ain't going to change no minds, but we can change enough minds within our own community to say. And in that case, I think there's little choice about who we should vote for on that day. What would you say to black conservatives who say our best interests are conservative values? OK, here we go. Woo, this right here, boy, this right here. Eric Dyson should have just said, I don't know. I don't know what black conservatives believe. I don't know what conservatism is. Yeah, he would have been much better off, and I would have respected him if he had said that. Because what he's about to say right here is just bona fide ignorance. And y'all know who he's going to call out. Uh, Charlemagne the Fraud just said black conservatives. In the chat, tell me who do you think Michael Eric Dyson is going to bring up without even being prompted to. I would love to hear what you say. Uh, let me see if anybody... Who is he going to bring up as an avatar for black conservatism? Who's he going to bring up? Oh, okay. Some people calling out that Biden's kids. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Who is he going to call out? I want to see. Is anybody going to put it in there? Who is Eric Dyson going to call out um, for black conservatism? Um, okay, I see some people. Really? Wow. Okay. Larry Elder. Okay. Cornell West. Really? Cornell West. <laughs> Clarence Thomas. Ben Carson. Okay. I see what you're doing. None of those. Y'all, come on now. I'm surprised. Okay. Well, in a moment, he's going to say it. So let me, uh, Ben Carson. No, not Ben. I mean, those have been great ones too. I would, yeah, I would have thought those would, I could, I could kind of see where you got those from. Oh, there she is. She's into the chat. Candace. <laughs> 
Candace Owens is there. I mean, she gives concern. I mean, liberals allergies. I don't know why, because there's far more conservative people that you can stand by, like Tom Scott. I agree. Like Ben Carson, I agree. Like there's tons of other ones as well. But boy, wait till you hear this about Candace. That's why so few of them. Mm. Their numbers speak for themselves, mm -hmm. right? Uh, black conservatives are quite interesting. Um, you know, you had a, a wonderful uh, interview here with Candace Owens. She ain't, you know, what's interesting to me, Candace Owens ain't uh, apologize. You know, her and Jason Whitlock, these are people who are destructive for our community. If that's what black conservatism is, her or Jason Whitlock or Clarence Thomas, who has been a singular source of destruction for our people, uh, the black the black conservatives ain't got much to recommend for their particular viewpoint. This is what I think we're missing. And I'm not. This is something I, and uh, I want to speak a word of encouragement if I can. Those who profess to be conservative, those who profess to be Christian and want to be involved in this political space, you do not need the majority. You don't. All you need is to lead. And we can see this in so many different areas where mass of people, we see this actually in these college campus protests. Mass of people protesting, and they really don't know what they're protesting. They don't really know what they're doing. However, a somebody who can lead them in a direction would be able to funnel, dare I say, Pied Piper, 400, 300, 1,000 reckless, wild college students in a direction of doing something, something nefarious. The same thing is true about conservatives. We don't need to be the 1000. We just need to be good leaders. And I think that's the part that people hate about Candace, because I said this before, though I don't agree with Candace on a lot of stuff, Candace Owens is very, very good at making her point clear so much that you can say, yeah, I can agree to that. Or I still hate her. She's terrible, blah, blah, blah. But you won't say She's not clear. It's very rare that Candace, and I use the, the term, the economy of words. Candace doesn't use a lot of words, whereas Michael Eric Dyson is going to flood you with words. If I did a word count of Michael Eric Dyson on The Breakfast Club and Candace Owens on The Breakfast Club, I guarantee you Michael Eric Dyson beat her by twice, easily, because he just talks a lot. and He says very little. Candace talks very little, and she says very much. So... To be a conservative, to be a Christian in the political space, all you need to do is be able to clearly articulate your ideas succinctly. That's it. And then people can say they support you or they don't. Bang. Because we all know what we don't like about Candace. We all do. We all know what we like about Candace. We all do. And we probably can articulate it and we'll all be like, yeah, that's true. I, I totally get it. Yep, I see that. You're right. Michael Eric Dyson, what you talking about, my guy? So anyway, that's my word of encouragement to those who profess to be conservative or Christians in this political space and you're attempting to find your way through it. All you need to do is be very clear in what you believe, very clear and be able to articulate it. But you know where you get that from? You get that from being in conversation where you're duking it out with somebody. But when you go to the breakfast club with Charlemagne the Fraud and Michael Eric Dyson and you don't get pushback, you don't. Um, articulate and you don't, um, um, dare I say, um, synthesize your thoughts down to the very most succinct way possible to convey it. You don't do that. So that's why Michael Eric Dyson keeps getting on these platforms and talking long about nothing. Dear Wokes at gmail.com. I'm defending any of these people at all. What I think uh, with somebody like a Candace Owens, I don't think black people, certain black people didn't realize she already had a large audience of black mm -hmm. people. She had a movement called Blexit, and that, right. that was six, seven years ago. She was trying to get people, black people in particular, to get off the Democratic plantation right. and seek other things, whether it was being a conservative, being an independent, whatever it is. So I think now when people say this thing about, oh, it's black people embracing her, it's like, nah, she already had an audience of black well, people. When we say black people, we're talking about new black people who weren't embracing her before. The black people who weren't, look, of course they are conservative black people in this mm -hmm. country. The, the average black person, without respect to politics, is culturally and religiously and morally conservative. They believe in Ten Commandments. Yeah, they might want to support 
uh, a woman's right to have abortion, uh, bodily autonomy. But for real, for real, when they go to church, they, they're concerned about the fact that you might be aborting a baby, right? So you can have that a particular a religious stupid. viewpoint about an issue and have a political uh, and understand the political consequence of that viewpoint. That's why black people have been radically dissimilar to white evangelicals and the politicization of white evangelicals who have used their religion to try to make this a Christian nation. Martin Luther King Jr. used his Christianity to make this a just nation. And Candace Owens gets a break because white folk got rid of her. The, the right wing got tired of her on the issue of Israel versus Palestine when she had a fleeting moment of revelation and now she's accepted and embraced. I, I don't even know where that was just a snippet from Michael Eric Dyson and the Breakfast Club. And I don't get why we give Michael Eric Dyson a pass like that. And Michael, uh, I mean, he, he regales MLK during the full video and MLK, sure, he used what he called Christianity to make America a just nation. The problem is it wasn't a Christian nation and there's no moral foundation. So therefore, their justice is built on what? Because it's not built on God's word and the truth of God's word because they bastardize it. So what what is it built on? We don't have a clue. And that's what we see today. That's how we can literally take today and demonstrate the complete opposite of what MLK was possibly shooting for and looking at character rather than um, color of skin. And look at where we are now today. Exact opposite. They won't do it. Let's go. This one's going to be fun, though, because you may or may not have known that any kind of um, <clears throat> any kind of telling the story that black men don't support Biden is actually a form of misinformation. Now, granted, misinformation is a new term, fairly new in the, the lexicon of humanity. Dare I say, maybe since 2019, it's not really new. Um, I mean, it's not really an old term, kind of like fake news, same thing. But this is from the Griot, and I believe I put the link for that down in the description of this video, as well as for The Breakfast Club. Beware of stories spreading misinformation about black men being fed up with Joe Biden and the Democrats. This is an opinion piece. While black voters frustrations are real, we can't allow that to be an excuse to let misinformation seep into the ecosystem, our communities or the ballot box. And this is from Antoine Seawright. And I dare say that Antoine is seeing wrong. Because in this, in this opening sentence, he literally disagrees with himself. Listen to what he said. While black voters' frustrations are real, what are the frustrations about? Well, he doesn't explain that in there, but look what he says next. We can't allow that to be an excuse to let misinformation seep in. What's misinformation? And I'm hoping that in this article, he's going to explain what is this misinformation that is seeping into the community and into the ballot box. Let us go. Let us go. We got Joe and Kamala. They, man, they're looking happy. They're about to, you know, the most popular president in the world. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to call myself out. I'm going to call a flag on the play for myself. Hold on. Uh, all right, I'm calling myself out right here. I do this all the time. When I tell people that I am a Morehouse graduate, that I am married to a beautiful black woman, and I've been married to her for 22 years, that I have two roundhead black girl daughters that came from my wife and my marriage, and they're younger than our marriage date. I, I give you my bona fides. I do that because I want you to come at me with the smoke and I want to set you straight. So I do that. I do it all the time. Matter of fact, I, most of the time I do it by wearing something that has Morehouse on it because I want you to know that I am a black man according to all of your made up standards. All of your made up standards. I am a black man. I live in the South. I went to a black college university. I have a black wife, so on and so forth. Fill in the blanks. You're not going to find a way to isolate me from the black community. I'm your problematic nephew. You're going to have to deal with me. Now, the reason I bring it up is because Mr. Uh, C. Wrong here opens up his 
opinion piece by doing exactly what I do. So I can't give him any shade. He says here, let me be clear. I am not new to this conversation. I'm true to it. And what he's doing here is he's trying to stop you in your tracks and stop me in my tracks from criticizing what he's saying. He's saying that, look, I've already, and he's going to give you a few more. Um, he's going to fill out his bona fides in a moment. He's saying like, look, I've, I'm not, this is not my first time at the rodeo. This is not my first time having this discussion. So I know what I'm talking about. Don't come at me. I, on the contrary, am going to do that. Let us go. As much time as I've uh, as I spend talking with local, state, and national elected leaders, stakeholders, grassroots organizations, and party officials, I spend even more hosting and participating in events, in barbershops and beauty salons, churches and community centers, engaging everyday folks across America, where I am listening. I, I am listening a whole lot more than talking. So basically what he's saying is, don't come at me because I've already, I know what I'm talking about. But guess what? I don't believe him, so I'm going to come at him. Here we go. I've even written a few articles here and there about the importance of the black vote, particularly black men. But an article I read the other day didn't remind me, as I've often argued, that black men, that black voters are the most consequential voter bloc in America or in the black man are positioned to be the most critical swing vote in 2024 election. Instead, it just further illustrated how quickly misinformation can spread in our community and how damaging that information is can be. So right here, I'm assuming that he is now going to explain what is this misinformation? What are these lies that are being spread in the community? I think that's fair. I think we, we should expect that because that's what it sounds like he's going to explain. Let us continue. As I wrote back in August, it's clear that voters of color, particularly black men, are the number one target for misinformation, disinformation, and voter suppression, and the experts tell us that it's only going to get worse in 2024. I got a question for you. What is the misinformation, Mr. C. Wrong? What is the disinformation, sir? And how in the world is there voter suppression? Let's put away the false narrative and let's get into the real brass tacks. What is the real voter suppression that you're talking about, sir? Now, before we go any further, because you still ain't told me anything, let me make it absolutely clear that I don't pretend to speak for all black men, much less the entire black community. OK, but you can speak for everybody else. But I, I digress. That would be more than a little insulting. Well, I'm here and I'm insulted. Furthermore, anyone who spends even a little time in a barbershop will tell you that there's some real frustration out there and even more frustration and even more confusion. Please forgive me. Yes, that thanks to President Biden and the Inflation Reduction Act, prices are starting to go down. Um, Where? Where are they going down? The prices of where? <laughs> But let's be honest. All you need to do is go to the grocery store and you'll see the affordability crisis. Come on. Prices are still high and people are struggling. OK, now I want you to remember these are re realities. These are the realities that are causing people to consider. Eh, I don't know if I want to vote for this guy. I don't know if I, I don't know why I'm supporting this dude. These are real realities. So let's see what he says about those, because those are realities. The, the grocery store, I keep telling you, all the grocery store is the place that all political rallies should be had. Trump, if Trump wants to win, he should do political rallies in the grocery store. I know it sounds crazy. In Sam's Club, at Costco, in the parking lot of Costco, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. Go to Publix and do a political rally, Trump, I promise you, it'll be a shoe-in. It will be a shoe-in. I get that. In fact, I can identify with it because I'm pretty frustrated myself. The fact is that when Democrats hold a small majority like we do now in the Senate, Republicans can still use archaic rules and filibuster to block major legislation. Like what? Now he went from grocery store, which is, I think, a, a main street issue, to now talking about major legislation. Tell me what bill in Congress is going to change the price of milk. What, what are you talking about? That's exactly what they did with the president's Build Back Better plan in the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. What are you talking about? 
and it's pull your hair out by the roots frustrating. Some folks are frustrated. Some are angry. Some are confused and some aren't even feeling this election at all. I get that. But we can't let that be the excuse to let us, to let this kind of misinformation seep into the ecosystem of our communities and ballot box. What is the misinformation, Mr. C. Wrong? For example, oh, here we go. For example, let's see what he says. For example, the article argues that black men are frustrated with President Biden and the Democrats because they have failed to deliver on things like student loan debt relief, policy reform, and voting rights. That is a whole, I'm sorry, police reform, please forgive me, and voting rights. That is a whole stone cold, bold faced lie. I don't know one, I'm sorry, I, I've, I've been finished with my student loan debt. I'm trying to keep my daughters from taking on student loan debt. I believe in police reform, therefore I drive the speed limit. And voting rights, I just got my voter registration card, um, my update in the mail yesterday. I know where I'm voting. What are you talking about? Who is actually, who is this? Like, I, I promise you, I'm, I'm going on a, lead, a limb here. No black man that can vote, that can vote is worried about voting rights. No, no black man that can vote is worried about it. And I'll go, so, go as far to say he's not worried about his wife or children if they're able to vote voting because they've probably already taken care of that matter. So what is that? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Next, police reform. I'm sorry. Most black men are law abiding citizens. We're not. I don't bite my fingernails worrying about the police, even though I drive fast. My kid, my daughter tells me I drive fast, but. I still don't worry about the police like that. I know that, you know, I'm driving fast. I probably need to slow it down. That's my fault. I don't look at the police and see them and like wonder or worry or doubt or start panic. I don't do that. Why do you do that, sir? And then lastly, a student loan debt. I'm sorry. Nobody's worried about that. I, I promise you. I promise you. You can say that to the cows come home, but nobody is sitting there sweating over that. What they're worried about is the fact that they don't have a job. What they're worried about is they can't afford $5 a gallon gas. That's what they're worried about, sir. It ain't got nothing to do with these foolish ideas that you brought up. This is the misinformation, Mr. C. Wrong. Let's continue. The reality is that President Biden has delivered. What did he deliver? He has signed more than two dozen executive orders, I'm sorry, actions to deliver $146 billion in student loan relief for over 4 million Americans. But that hasn't, that doesn't net one thing, it doesn't change one thing in these people stated they can't find a job. Sure, they don't have the student loan debt. Sure. For underwater basket weaving or German dance. Um, polka degree, but they still don't have a job, sir. Mr. C. Ron, they don't have a job. There's industries that have completely evaporated off the American landscape. Sir, they're not worried about student loan debt. They would, most people, I'm going to go on a limb. Most people, if they had the money that they would like to have, like when they went to school and they were able to make the money, at least in the ballpark of what they thought they were going to make when they got out of school, most people would probably be willing to pay back the student loan debts without any problem. Most people would. That's just my understanding. That's just my assessment. The problem is they're, they're choosing. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul. So they're robbing student loan debt repayment to make their car note. They're robbing student loan payment to pay their house note or to, to get their kids in school to, for crying out loud, buy bread. That's really what it is. We have the working poor. We have a, a, an invisible welfare state. That's the problem. We got people that go to work every day and they're living paycheck to paycheck. They're not worried about student loan debt. They're not worried about voting rights. They're not worried about police reform. They're worried about whether or not they will have a door uh, whether or not there's going to be a pink slip on their door when they get home. That's what they're worried about, sir. This is not what people are worried about. And for you to actually insinuate that this is the only reason that people are upset is about student loan debt. What about the people that don't that have already paid their student loans? Like myself. What, what, what do I get? 
Why would I care about you writing a check and erasing people's student loan debt when I paid mine off? They must have forgiven or rather forgotten how President Biden cut undergraduate loan payments in half and helped to drop monthly payments for millions of borrowers down to zero. What, how did they help them if they don't have a job? I'm just wondering. I mean, maybe I don't maybe I don't get it. I don't know how if I don't have a job and I can't afford to pay my student loans, sure. You getting rid of my student loan debt, that does help to a degree, but I still don't have a job. And, and how is that a good thing? I'm just lost. I'm lost. He must not he must not know that earlier this month, President Biden laid out a new plan that will expand the student loan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Give him a an air horn. Oh my goodness. He laid out a plan to expand that student loan debt relief for more than 30 million Americans. Man. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Oh, wait, I don't have any student loan debt. And my wife doesn't either. Hmm. My mom, she's a senior citizen and she's on Social Security and she doesn't have one either. Darn it. Um, my niece, my nephews. You know what? A lot of my, you know, I don't know a lot of people that have student loans. <laughs> I don't know a lot of people that have student loans anymore. Of course, none of this would be necessary if GOP officials hadn't led the charge pushing the right wing Supreme Court to block Biden's plan to erase 400 billions in student loan debt for giving the debt of early of nearly all four. Wow. Like this is crazy for giving the debt of nearly all 40 million federal student loan borrowers. Why is that a good thing if they don't have if they don't have a job? But even more than that, you borrowed money. Can I, will this be the car note forgiveness plan? Cause I'll go get a car note tomorrow. If y'all want to just go ahead and forgive debts. How about house? I mean, this house, I mean, I got, I got a little mortgage still. Is there a house note forgiveness program? I made the decision to buy this house. I made this decision. I'm going to go make the decision to go buy this car. If you go ahead and forgive me of the debt, will there be a program to forgive me that? Cause I made the decision. Why do student loans get a forgiveness, but not car, car debt? Why not? Why not house note, house debt? Why not? I'm just wondering, just asking questions. This is ridiculous. Isn't that delivering on student loan relief? But who needs it, though? Why not? <laughs> why not help them find jobs and they can pay for themselves? And it does enrich the economy even more because you have fewer and fewer and fewer people on the government teat. But see, you don't want that, Mr. C-Wrong. You don't want that. You want people to remain beholden to the, to the government. That's what you want. Go to school, get a degree that is useless, get a degree that you can't make money on, and then turn around and say, oh, the government will repay it. That's what you want. But what about police reform? I'm t see, first of all, he's already assuming that student debt, police reform and voting rights are the big issues that people are considering. And, and that's not the case at all. I, I don't know people that are arguing this except liberals, I, except liberals, any Republican, any conservative, any Christian, any person with a warm um, blood circulating through their veins is not sitting there saying they want police reform, and student loan debt forgiveness. They want to work, Mr. C-Wrong. They want to work. They want a job. They want to go out and be gainfully employed to take care of their wives and children. That's what they want. People are not sitting there saying this. But let us continue. I hear you asking, well, despite what the article tells us, President Biden has delivered there too. Let's start with the fact that in October 2022, President Biden announced that there will be a that he was pardon, pardoning all federal offenses for simple marijuana possession and calling on governments, governors rather, in every state to do the same. He also started <laughs> the process of for broader de decriminalization and rescheduling of marijuana under the federal law, but that doesn't matter in this article, does it? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. By... I'm a black man. I don't smoke weed 
and I don't drink. Why are you assuming that my biggest concern is those who do that? Now, we can have an argument. I know somebody got into uh, they got into my email the other day and got into the live chat arguing about my art, my position on marijuana usage. I don't I don't believe it's, there's you know, there's no reason for it. I know apart from um, some medicinal reasons, I, I don't support it at all. Now, this person, why why do I care about drug use? Why? Why? I don't do it. I don't want to be around people who do it. I don't see a benefit or value to society for people who do. So why should I be concerned about that? And why is that your marquee example of police reform? P pardoning people who went to jail for drug for marijuana. How about the President Biden ban chokeholds and no knock warrants from the federal law enforcement? Does that count? I am not even remotely concerned about being put in a chokehold. I'm not concerned about a no knock warrant. Is is it is it that is it that um, problematic? Is it that run amok that I I don't yeah I, I don't even believe that I've even thought about that. I've never thought about being put in a chokehold or having a no knock warrant. Does that mean that they'll never happen to me? I, I don't know. But that's not my biggest concern. Why are, why is, well, rather, why are all of the police reforms that this man is proposing are put on the government rather than why not police reform being we're trying to get black men to be in the homes? Why not police reform being that we want fathers in the home more? How about that? How about we're reducing the, the abusive welfare state to encourage men and, and women to work out a marriage relationship and stay married? How about that? Because I promise you, I've never thought of this as a, an issue. Like, oh my gosh, there are no knock warrants. Oh my gosh, there's chokeholds. What about the, listen to this, the signing of the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act to make lynching a federal crime for the first time in history or creating, let me just ask you a question. Isn't lynching murder? I, I'm just asking. If somebody is hung, they're or lynched, they're murdered, am I right? Why do you need an anti-lynching bill with the Emmett Till name associated with it when murder is already on the books. I'm just saying. Of course, this is what these are the marquee examples of misinformation that Mr. Seawright believes our black men are subscribing to. And that's why they're running to Trump and the Republican Party. Federal crime for the first time in history, creating a national database to track law enforcement misconduct. Maybe President Biden should direct the Department of Justice to go after these brutal cops and departments in cities like Mount, <laughs> Mount Vernon, Louisville, Phoenix, and Miss Minneapolis. But wait, President Biden did do that, too. Is that what, again, and, and I, I could be being petty. Maybe I just don't get this. Maybe I'm not highbrow enough. I don't think anybody's arguing this. I really don't believe that. I could be wrong. And maybe if you're in the chat and you disagree, let me know. Like you really, these are marquee things. And by the way, if, if you do disagree, could you please tell me what you do as a profession? I don't want to know exactly where you work. You can say I'm an electrical engineer. I'm a, you know, a hair follicle surgeon, whatever. I'm a gerbil vet, whatever. And then that you're concerned about these matters. I just, I just wonder. And don't get me started about voting rights because in August 2021, less than a year after the election, the Democrat-controlled House of Representatives passed the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, the most comprehensive measure to strengthen voting rights since 1965. Every single House rep Republican voted against it. And, and again, I'm sorry, and once, in the Senate, the GOP finally killed it with the same archaic procedural tactics uh, the segregations had used back in the 1950s and 60s. Later that month, Democrats tried again, repackaging the initiative with the Freedom to Vote Act, but the Republican senators pulled the same old trick again. The 
this is supposed to be the marquee example of why of the misinformation. But I'm just asking a question, and I, I really truly am seeking to to understand. I'm not just trying to disagree to be cantankerous, even though I've been told that I'm cantankerous. If you are a man of high melanin over the age of what voting age is 18 or 16. Uh, let's just say, let's say over the age of 18 for laughs and giggles. Uh, can you honestly tell me that you don't know where to vote, how to vote or when to vote in your uh, state, local and national elections? Can you please Tell me that because I'm finding it completely unimaginable to believe. I'm sorry. I don't believe this. I don't believe that there needed to be a, any kind of John Lewis voting rights act. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. No. Now, am I saying that everybody has all of their, um, their, their ducks in a row in order to vote? Absolutely not. But just tell me that you yourself don't. Because, again, I just received yesterday my voting confirmation um, postcard and my wife's postcard. And I looked at the bottom and I said, I wonder. And it said that you registered to vote on this date. And I was kind of scratching my head. I was like, oh, that's when I registered our cars. So when you register your car here in Georgia, you already registered vote. I mean, literally, it was two years ago when I registered that car that my wife's driving. Um, so what, what, what's the deal? I don't get it. I do not understand what is the consternation that we need to go have this new federal law. Because remember, notice they, they tack on John Lewis, John Lewis civil rights. OK, they tack on separatists and racialism and all this kind of stuff like that. They tack in all these words to it to kind of give you some kind of racial animus. They give you these words to try to make you sound like there's some kind of pushback that's that's not organic, that's not natural, that is it's racial in its in, in its start. But that's not the case at all. I, I just would love to know who are the people that don't know where to vote, when to vote or how to vote. This late in the game. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Who are they? At this stage of the game, you need to say, like, there's a whole community over here on Cliftondale Road. Nobody over here knows where to vote. And there's a whole bunch of able-bodied men, 18 to 55, that don't have driver's license, that don't have state IDs, that don't have, they don't have jobs, they, they don't have bank accounts, they don't have Netflix accounts, nothing. And it is wandering around and, and it is waiting to be taken advantage of. You got, you're going to have to show me this at this point, Mr. C. Wrong, because this is starting to become ignorant. It's insulting that you would think that only black people don't know how to get voter IDs. Are you trying to say the Hispanics got it on lockdown? Asians and um, um, Indians and Native Americans, they all got it on lockdown. But black folk can't seem to figure out how to vote, sir. And the racists are supposed to be the less melanated people, according to your gospel. Those are the racist people. Okay. All right. But importantly, President Biden and the Democrats are still fighting with the le latest version of stuck in community uh, in committee because the Republican controlled house won't even let it come to the floor for a vote. Again, what please help me understand how student loan forgiveness, police reform, and voter rights are the marquee, the high watermark of the issues that affect black people, particularly black men, because that's what the article is about. Not having a job, not being able to pay their bills, not having a, a path to economic freedom, not having a way to say, man, I know that I'm be able to own this house in X amount of time. Not That's not it. The biggest issue is whether or not some 22-year-old gets their student loans forgiven, whether or not, again, I support police reform. I support the police. You know how I support it? By staying on this side of the law. That's how I do it. That's how I support the police. Y'all ain't going to waste your resources on me. And then voting rights? Are you honestly trying to tell me that? That's insulting, my guy. That is so insulting. 
still the article would have us believe that President Biden and the Democrats haven't made voting rights a priority. We don't want them to be a priority. That's the problem. Nobody cares about that. It really is not that important. I'm trying to tell you. I am trying to tell you. Don't hear what I didn't say. I didn't say voting is not important and that we should not vote. I did not say that. So please don't hear what I did not say. What I did say is voting rights are not lost. We have our voting rights. And it is I, a lot of these people are like, well, who is this leprechaun that you're talking about? Who is this unicorn that you're referring to that doesn't have a driver's license, that doesn't have a bank account? For crying out loud, you can't even cash a check without some form of ID. How are you trying to tell these people that they can't, they don't have what it needs, what they need to vote? Stop it. That's not only wrong, it's dangerous because it rewards Republicans. And once fighting against voting rights, well, we ain't buying it. The ones fighting against voting rights, well, we ain't buying it. The article criticizes for not, the article criticizes for not developing economically. But while the writer admits that under President Biden, black unemployment is at a record low, he ignores the black entrepreneurship is at a high with new, new black owned small businesses opening at the fastest rate in a generation. I don't know what I need to see those numbers. I'm a small business owner. I started, I guess, during the Biden administration because I wanted to do this after I retired from teaching. I got to see those numbers because please keep in mind, again, there was this little thing like, you know, a global pandemic that was happening when Biden came in. So everybody's numbers were high as relates to unemployment. That's not saying anything. And you're saying that small business start startups are opening faster. How long how long have they been open? What's the number going to look like in five years? That's what we need to see. Because small businesses starting and opening, look, I can tell you right now, I'm a small business owner. I can tell you right now, closing is very easy. <laughs> closing is extremely easy. Go to go to Facebook Market and just search for any any particular small business, um, um, anything, beauty supply, auto detail, um, T-shirt company. Just and search for the, the the stuff that is used to make that products like the, the shirt press or the all the stuff that goes into auto detailing or landscaping you'll see you'll see it small business is closing all the time so what what is the purpose of that point i don't get it sir mr c wrong i don't get it who helps secure roughly 100 billions in federal contracts for small disadvantaged and black owned businesses biden Okay. Who laundered? Oh, I'm sorry. Who launched <laughs> new efforts to aggressively combat housing discrimination and protect black owned home values, knowing that along with education, home values are the largest or rather the biggest factor in building black wealth. Biden. Are you trying to say that Trump didn't do that? Okay. Okay. Who passed the Inflation Reduction Act and fought to expand the child tax credit and cut child poverty in half biden please tell me I, again he's he spent time going over student loans police reform and voting but now he just high bullet points three key points with no reference no context or anything of that nature i think that's disingenuous why why are these not important things but why not cut taxes Again, small business ownership, please understand, if you start a small business, if you started a small business, let's say in 2022, there's a high probability that you are probably not really solvent even now. So we're in 2024. You're probably still maybe making payments on loans that you to buy equipment and stuff like that. You're probably paying contractors, paying employees. You're probably not in a place where you're even probably even making the money that you would have made if you just thought, stayed working at whatever you were doing before. So please don't tell me that small business ownership is making up for having a real bona fide job because a small business just means that you bought a job. Okay. You, you, you bought a job. That's what it is. <laughs> I bought a job. I own, I own a job that hasn't paid me yet. That's what it is. It pays me a little bit, but not much. I'm, again, I'm not. I am not dancing in the streets about it. I thank God for every person that comes to the studio that uses the studio. Oh, by the way, we will be doing a live stream tomorrow from Podium. 
but I appreciate it, but I'm not under the confusion and delusion that that's going to keep my family fed. I know that it's not as of yet. I'm going to keep on watering. I'm going to keep on digging. I'm going to keep on fertilizing it. And eventually it will, but I know right now it's not. But most small businesses are like that. Now, there are some, you know, there's some aberration, some um, some that just, you know, come out the gate and they do really well. God bless you. Fantastic. But most of them don't. Let's continue. This isn't a game. The article wants us to believe that President Biden and the Democrats aren't repairing infrastructure, fixing dilapidated school buildings, or doing anything to invest in black communities. So I guess President Biden investing $1.2 trillion to repair our infrastructure with the bipartisan infrastructure law is just a figment of our imagination. I guess Securing $1.3 billion to help our schools safely reopen, ensuring high poverty school districts and schools are protected from funding cuts and investing $7.7 billion in historically black colleges and universities doesn't count. I guess $15 billion to replace lead water lines in poor communities doesn't count. Please, again, that sounds really profound, but I know that $7 billion to HBCUs is over 10 years. And when you really put, when you divide that up, it's not as much as you would like to make it sound like Mr. C wrong. So please miss me with all of that bravado. But even in that, why notice again, who is, who is the, the, uh, who's the hero of this story? It's Joe Biden. It's the government. It's the Democrats. It's them. So Moving forward, who would be the hero in future story? Joe Biden, the Democrats, the government. Why is it that you're not focusing? Why are the efforts that he's putting in place not making humans, men, the heroes of the story, a.k.a. reducing the uh, reducing debt or reducing rather taxes so that men can get find a job and or, or bringing businesses back to the United States? Where is that? So that, again, there's more opportunities. Where is it? I'm just wondering. More black families have health insurance, which why in the world do I want the government to be in control of my health insurance? Right now, than in any other point in history, and we passed the first major gun safety law in nearly 30 years. Does that matter? Does it? What, what does the gun safety law do? It causes people that obey the law to have further issues or or have further hurdles to be able to protect themselves in the case that they need a gun. That's all that does. It doesn't stop criminals because criminals are criminals. I continue. Remember what life was like in January 2021? Do you remember how bad things were at the height of C-19 pandemic? That was the America that Biden's presidency inherited. Fast forward to today, and you'd have to agree that by any measure, the turnaround has been dramatic. No, it hasn't, because I live here in Georgia, and we did not even abide by the lion's share of the shenanigans that y'all was um, following. We we ignored everything that came out of D.C. We we were we were free and breathing, and smiling, and looking at our neighbors, and waving. We was doing that well before y'all clowns were, well before you. So no, no, we were not. We were just trying to get back to work. We were trying to do our jobs. That's it. So no, 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 that wasn't the case whatsoever. We've made real progress over the past three years, and when you compare it with what we lived through just um, from the four years before, it's been remarkable what are you talking about like what are you talking about everything here is focusing on daddy the government that's it they've done nothing to empower me as a as a husband as a father as a business owner they've done nothing not a thing i so sure they they've made some loans available for small businesses i don't need a loan I need people to have disposable income so they can use my facilities. I need taxes to be lower so I can stop dreading April 15th. I need gas prices to be some level of remedial rather than these valedictorian level GPA gas prices. That's what I need. But see, none of this stuff that he's talking about addresses any of that. It all addresses and makes the hero of the narrative 
government. A lot has been done. And of course, we still have plenty of work left to do, but let's start there. I would love to go back to the year before every major election. And I'm pretty sure this sentence right here, a lot has been done, <clears throat> especially when you're voting an incumbent in. We have an incumbent running against a challenger. A lot has been done, of course, and we still have plenty of work to do, but let's start there. I guarantee you this sentence could be used any in any time in American history. I'm almost, <laughs> I mean, it could go for the, it, I mean, this sentence could be used anytime at any point in American history. And of course, that there are some folks who like to pull out the what about, what has Biden done for us talking point on the radio or their podcast. Hey, are you talking about me? Hey, he's talking about me. I don't actually care. I don't want Biden to do a thing for me. That's the thing. I don't want you to do a thing for me. Move out the way. Move government out of the way and allow me to do what I need to do. I don't I don't need you. I don't need you, Zaddy. I don't. I really don't. All right, let's keep going. Frankly, some of those folks are people I listen to and people I like. Okay, well, maybe he likes me. But just because I personally said it on the show, you like, I'm sorry, show you like doesn't make it true. Okay. What? That is wild. That is the wildest thing. <laughs> they care about ratings. We care about the future of this country and our community's well-being. So we just are, we're, we're supposed to overlook here, let me turn the lights off. We're supposed to overlook that Biden has wholesale sought to continue the further demise of the black community by way of um, Planned Parenthood. Right. So I'm not supposed to even know that I'm not supposed to pay attention to that. Um, I'm not supposed to pay attention to the fact that I'm supposed to be blind to the fact that Biden has completely eviscerated families by continually ratcheting it up the abusive welfare system that encourages, dare I say, even seeks out to remove men from their families and from their homes. I, sh I should totally be oblivious to that, Mr. C. Wrong. I just want to make sure I understand what I'm supposed to be doing because I don't know how to play this game. Because he talks about communities well-being, but what, what policy does Biden suppose that's going to help black families? Because that's what the community is. I know a lot of people like to talk about it takes a village. That is a misnomer. It takes a family. Where is the family dynamic policies of Joe Biden? There isn't any. It's this nebulous term called the community. And who knows what that means? See, this election really is a true binary choice. And that choice carries with it some truly high stakes. As, I, as I've said on my many occasions, black folks are casting a survival vote. And black men could be the most quintessential voting block in the election and for elections to come. Survival. Like literally, listen to what they're saying. <laughs> Listen to the dynamics. Listen to the hyperbole. Oh, survival. Like, are you honestly, do you honestly want me to believe that casting my vote for Trump, I'm going to die? Is that what I'm supposed to believe? Come on, my guy. Come on. Am I supposed to say, oh, I cast a vote for Trump. Keel over. Come on, man. Come on, guy. God is in control, my friend. But see, we're going to continue. Talk shows. Talk. It's what they do, whether it's on television, the radio, or a podcast. Well, just say what you say about me. Come on, man. They have the right to talk. And for the most part, it's entertaining as H. But, the, but to pretend it's news is intellectually dishonest at best. At worst, downright dangerous. Now, you do realize he's not told you what was wrong about any of the pushback. Now, he's, he's given examples AKA these various programs that the administration has pushed out, but he's not told you how they're actually good or how they play into the role that I, again, small business owner would care about. I as a homeowner would care about. I as a husband and father would care about. He hasn't done that. 
But again, this is the, the misinformation, allegedly. And I don't think that he, he made that case at all. So going back up here to the beginning, while black voters frustrations are real, we cannot allow that to be an excuse to let us to let misinformation seep into the ecosystem, the communities and the ballot box. He didn't meet that standard at all. Not at all. He did not explain what he was talking about. He did not give robust examples. He did not point out the, the most he's assuming that the issues that black men have and that, um, yeah, the black men have with Biden are these binary did they use binary they use binary these binary distinctives when in actuality i think it's fair to say that they're not they're not those they're much more simple people want to be left alone people want to be able to take care of their families men want to be able to uh shepherd their wives and children to go out and make a good day's living wage and have a good make a good living and bring that home to their families that's it they don't want to spend $8 a gallon in gas. They don't want to spend $5 for a loaf of bread. They don't want that. They don't. And, and, and let's just be honest. They don't want the government telling them what their health care is. They don't want the government writing checks to college students who got a degree in underwater German basket weaving. They don't want you to do that. But you regale that as if that's something to be proud of and, dare I say, excited about. But they don't want that. They want to go ahead and just do what they need to do from day to day, what they've been, what they should be doing, which is taking care of their families. That's what black men want. And I know this. Why? Because I'm a black man. 